It's that candy fresh, got the new now next If you were those artists in the city, come on and get your shine on Get your shine on Candy fresh, come show up, get your shine on It's that candy fresh, got the new now next If you were those artists in the city, come on and get your shine on Get your shine on Candy fresh, come show up, get your shine on Thank you so much for coming out and joining us for the first and debut filming of Candy Fresh. My name is Sonny. And I'm Miss Britt. Hey, y'all. On tonight's show, we have a lot of special guests coming through. First up, we have artist and activist Toki Wright and visual artist Kenneth Caldwell. And we also have entrepreneur, hip-hop artist, and educator Chadwick Niles Phillips stopping by, as well as superstar mommy, all-around Wonder Woman, and the voice contestant Miss Ashley DuBose to honor us with our presence. Now what I need is for our live audience to make some noise for DJ Diggy right now, who's holding it down for us on the ones and twos, and for our so sweet dancers for bringing us their energy. We also want the audience to give a live big thank you and give yourself some credit for coming out here and supporting Candy Fresh. Come on. So without further ado, we're gonna go ahead and get it started. Don't go anywhere, because we're keeping it sweet all night for you. This is Candy, Candy Fresh. Fresh. Hello everyone and welcome back to Candy Fresh. With me today I have artist and activist Toki Wright. Toki, welcome to Candy Fresh. Thank you for having me. Thank you for being here now. You're getting ready to perform at the end of the show tonight, so can you tell our listening audience and for those of you watching at home, what can we expect from this performance? Well, you're going to see me and Big Cats and Lydia Liza and Eric Mason from our project Pangea that came out earlier this year. Mm -hmm. So we're going to hit with a joint called Permanent. Mm -hmm. A uh, little cool, smooth joint for all the people out there. Okay. Okay. And uh, with Permanent, that was on your album Pangea, which was released on Soul Tools. Now, I know you as the vice president of Soul Tools Entertainment and, of course, my co-host on Soul Tools Radio. But tell the people, what is Soul Tools? Well, Soul Tools is a multimedia company, film, radio, television, print, press, events. We try to keep things uh, bubbling in the community and try to do things that are you know, in the in, in the now and in the mode of, of what's happening across the world and not just happening locally and try to, you know, bridge that gap between what's happening, you know, on the continent of Africa or in South America or in New York, um, musically, artistically, visually, spiritually, you know, and just try to provide people with some extra outlet that may, they may not have seen in these parts before. Okay, okay. So what's going to happen next? Now that you're taking over the Twin Cities, you've been able to travel around the world doing what you love. Uh, what's next for you? What you want to do? <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> I mean, musically, what's next for okay. you? Professionally, what's next for you? Uh -huh. I mean, next we're just working on a brand new album. Me and uh, Willie Shu are doing a project. It's kind of a, a, a bridge between house, um, hip hop, Afrobeat, and trap, and just like all those things that get people hyped, and okay. you know. But also with a with a with a good mind. I haven't really written anything purposely. I haven't written anything for about seven months now, and I'm just, like trying to reimagine myself artistically and and. Um, take all the things that I've learned over the last seven months and, and incorporate them into new pieces of music. Okay. When can we expect for that piece to come out? Well, I think we're, we're still in the process of producing it, but mm -hmm. we still have videos from the Pangea album that have yet to drop. We've got a film with uh, Reggie Reg, uh, Bahamian Son, that we shot in the Bahamas that's still yet to come out. We've been putting out these things called Breaking Bread, these pieces with um, elders and, and young people in the community having these cross-generational conversations about what's really going on, sitting around the table breaking bread. So we're constantly hitting people with, with different things every week. So if you tune in to like Soul Tools Radio, or uh, which is every Saturday night, 9 to 11 on KFAI, or uh, you can go to kfai.org forward slash Soul Tools Radio and you can listen to any program from the last couple of weeks. 
Um, you can just tune into us on Facebook, Soul Tools, uh, Twitter, Soul Tools, and you know, Toki Right everywhere. Yeah. Okay, okay. Well, make sure you stay tuned for that album with DJ Willie Shoe. If you're not familiar with DJ Willie Shoe, he's a DJ from the Twin Cities who also produces, and he'll be the one that's providing the music that Toki talked about for that future album. And of course, we'll provide on the Crownlands Media Group social media page all of the links to the information Toki provided, be it Soul Tools Radio or the Soul Tools Entertainment Facebook page. Now, Toki's not just an artist and an entrepreneur, but he's an activist as well. So, Toki, I'm going to ask you. With everything that's happening in the world, you know, social media seems to be oversaturated with negative messages, and it can be depressing sure. at times. What do you do to keep life sweet? Well, I think those negative messages were there before, and social media is just bringing light to it. Mm -hmm. So people that are in the struggle and in the fight know that those they carry that weight all the time. And I think uh, it's important for us to still laugh and spend time with each other, eat good food, you know, celebrate, have fun, have conversations that's just us and not everybody is in the mix of what we're talking about. And, you know, we just continue to try to, to cultivate some goodness in, in the face of all the hate that's out there. And that's so, so important. I hope you all are able to cultivate that love in the midst of all the hate and negativity as well. But I also want to ask you, Toki, as an artist, you know, you said you're going to be putting out, you know, a more party, upbeat album, something that's really, really fun, but something that's still conscious as well, something that makes people think. So as an artist, how do you stay woke? How do you not get tempted to fall into just the party and turn up vibe that seems to be trendy right now? What is it that you do to stay woke? Yeah. I think if you've been woke and you've been in the struggle and you've been dealing with reality, it's hard to go back to sleep again unless, you know, yeah. unless you somebody threw a, 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 a rubber band full of money in front of your face and told you to go think about something else. Mm -hmm. I have no choice but to be in the struggle because I'm struggling. My people are struggling. We, we go through this every day. When I hop outside and get in my car, I'm going to have to deal with driving home black. When I, when I put out a record, I got to deal with putting out a record black. When I do an event, I got to deal with doing a, uh, an event black. So it just is what it is. And, you know, I don't hide from it. I don't shun away from it. I don't shy away from it. I'm proud of it. And, I, you know, anybody that's proud of who they are, I, we, we try to big up them and show them love. Absolutely. Well, I hope you all at home listening are taking notes right now because this is a very accomplished artist, activist, and entrepreneur who's had the opportunity to travel around the world doing what he loves and has found great success while still remaining conscious and not giving in to the mainstream. And I hope you all can do the same without being tempted to conform to something that you're not. We're going to go ahead and turn it over to my co-host, Sonny, right now. But make sure you stay connected with Toki Wright on social media at Mr. Wright TC or Toki Wright on Facebook. Thank you and welcome back to Candy Fresh. I'm your host, Sonny. And today I have with me an, uh, a go-getting young man. I don't even think that's, that's enough to explain what you're doing. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. All right, so I didn't let you see the interview questions. I know some hosts, they let you see the, she let, they let you see the interview questions, but I didn't want to. So I'm the founder and CEO of an arts and entertainment production company called The Avant Garde, where I present different outings, experiences, and concerts geared towards the neo-soul, true deep-rooted hip-hop and poetic and visual arts diasporas. I'm the founder of an arts and entertainment um, curriculum called Hip Hop History and the Arts that I teach in Twin Cities high schools all around. Uh, the past year I taught at Roosevelt High School, Patrick Henry High School, Golden Parks High School, and Elizabeth Hall International Elementary. And we finished last school year an album called The Random Peace that'll be released. And this summer I taught at Fair School downtown and the students recorded a music EP called My Generation in conjunction with a, um, a production company out of IPR called Sudden Media. So they're recording at IPR, and I'm stepping back into music as an artist. I just released a song called The Feel, and it feels good right now. One of your favorite hip hop lyrics off the top of your head right now. Nas is like earth, wind, and fire, rims and tires, bulletproof glass inside is the realest driver. Planets in orbit, line them up with the stars, tarot cards, you can see the pharaoh Nas. Nas is like I am Mike, Messiah type, before the Christ, after the death, the last one left. Let my cash invest in stock, came a long way from blasting, text on blocks, went from Seiko to Rolex. Yeah. Nice, nice. Don't tap your head, man. Nice. I, mean, I wasn't gonna spit my own, but you said your favorite. Right, right, right. Peace to Nas, my favorite.
See, that's a song called Nas is like off his I Am album, Hip Hop in the Building. So how can people get in touch with you? Social media, website, something, yeah. pocket beep or something? <laughs> something, right? Okay, uh, Twitter, I'm at Niles underscore Davis. And two Facebook pages, actually three. Mm. Facebook, Hip Hop History in the Arts. Facebook.com slash Hip Hop History in the Arts. Facebook.com slash Chadwick Phillips. And Facebook.com slash The Avant Garde. But they'll all merge into a website coming near you very soon. All right. Thank you so much for coming out, Chadwick. We appreciate it. For sure. Thanks for having me. My name is Sonia, and you've been watching Candy Fresh. everyone and welcome back to Candy Fresh. I'm Miss Britt and today I have visual artists with me, Kenneth Caldwell. Kenneth, welcome to Candy Fresh. Thank you for welcoming me. Of course, of course. Now, you just got done doing some serious work over here. Thank so, you. tell us about the piece you just created. Uh, the piece I created is actually um, a young lady I, I actually saw and I was inspired by her movements. I think she's about 11 years old and I was just surfing through a friend's um, pictures on Facebook and I was like wow that was amazing so um, I just saw the youth and, and her her youthful moment and it was inspired by it so I decided to recreate it. Inspired by the youth I love that I love that now tell us about who you are as an artist obviously folks can see this piece and they kind of can see your aesthetic but tell us more about who you are as an artist and how you got your start. Uh, who I am as an artist um, I uh, actually I got my start um, watching my father uh, as a child, um, that was actually my way of connecting with them. Um, I really wasn't academically uh, uh, into the books or into the academics that when I, as a child, and so he used the art to communicate with me to get me to do better in school. And so um, I remember, I think it was like sixth grade, I remember coming home and there was an art table um, sitting in the house and I thought it was his. It was a real clean professional set and I was like, wow, that's, that's pretty dope. And um, he came in and he had asked me about school and I had gotten my grades up and he was like, that's yours. And I was like, had the biggest smile and grin on my face and stayed at the table for hours just drawing. So that's how I got my, that's how I got started or interested in the arts um, through my father, so. And your father is an artist as well? Yes, his, yes, uh, Charles Caldwell, a native of, Minne uh, native of Arkansas. Um, and he moved here when he was a, a kid as well. So I am born and raised here. So. Okay. Okay. Well, since we're talking about Minnesota, um, tell us, you know, because a lot of artists, they, they just want to establish themselves in a place other than where they were grown up, you know. So I want to know for you, why is it that you chose to stay here in Minnesota? Um, that's a very interesting question. So I actually thought um, several times about moving out of Minnesota and going to bigger cities where um, the community receives the art a lot more, like some of the bigger cities like LA and Philadelphia and California and uh, New York. Um, so um, as I was thinking, I was talking to um, some, some buddies of mine who own businesses and whatnot, and they were actually in the art classes with me when I was attending North High, and they said, you know, it, you could go somewhere else and jump on a bandwagon and be a part of something that's already movement, moving, or you can stay in Minnesota and be a part of something that you're starting and you're creating because Minnesota is an untapped market. So I chose to do that and uh, create my mark and I'm already receiving a lot of love from Minnesota so I figure stay here and make my brand um, starting here. So if I can make it here, I can make it anywhere. Absolutely, and folks don't seem to understand that there is so much talent here in the Twin Cities, and oftentimes artists that are born and raised here think they have to move to a bigger market like New York, L.A., Atlanta, London, etc., but there's so much opportunity here, and we're proving that not just with Kenneth Caldwell's art, but with Candy Fresh. Now, Kenneth, I want to know, um, I know you're into music, as am I, and a musician that I really love is Nina Simone, and something that Nina Simone says is, how can you be an artist and have your art not reflect the time. So please tell me, Kenneth, how does your art reflect what's happening here in the community today? Um, well, this piece right here is a prime example of it. Um, 
I feel like when I walk out the door, um, there's art around me all the time. And it's, it's just a matter of opening your eyes to see it. And so um, I take a lot of pictures. I, I, I surf the net, um, look in a lot of magazines, a lot of books. I may not read them, but I do pick up a lot of books <laughs> for the pictures. I'm one of those kids. Um, so I just pull from my surroundings and things that I see and, and just try to recreate it. Um, I don't have a specific style per se yet. Um, so I'm still exploring and experimenting with a lot of styles. And so when you look at my body of work, you know, it, it looks like there's a number of different artists that are creating the pieces, but it's because I'm still finding myself within the arts. So, Absolutely. Well, all of your work is beautiful. We most Thank definitely you. appreciate you doing this. He did this in like 20 minutes, you guys. You'll, um, you saw how he did. Um, it was amazing. So, Kenneth, we thank you so much for coming on. Candy Fresh, can you tell the people, where can they go to find out more about you and to purchase pieces of yours? Um, first of all, I'd like to thank you for um, welcoming me to the show. And you can find me on Instagram, um, call to art, that's C-A-L-D. T O A R T hashtag call to art um, on Facebook Kenneth the art teacher Caldwell and I have an art page that's on Facebook that is uh, Kenneth Caldwell Art Life so you can find me on those uh, those mediums um, that's pretty much it awesome well thank you again Kenneth for coming we so appreciate it. Oh, thank you so much for having me. All right, so I have some good questions. I really try to get into the mind of the artist. I feel awesome. The, the album was just released in March of this year, and it's already featured on a, a huge um, YouTube series called First, and it has uh, over 190,000 subscribers, and they've, they put my music in like all like their past five episodes, so it's pretty awesome. So a lot of exposure coming from that, and I've been touring, and it's just awesome. It's overwhelming, but it's, it's definitely a blessing. So. Okay. So, but, so, and I've seen it. I've been, I did some Inspector gadget okay. uh, and I, I see different people singing your songs mm -hmm. well BU um, ironically was about the last song almost the last song that we recorded and we were having the most like troublesome time coming up with the title for the album we had all these songs that we knew were gonna go on the album and um, anyway long story short we felt when this song came up first of all it was one of my favorite songs on the album mm -hmm. And I, I thought it was perfect to represent my my next project because, you know, obviously when you have a second project from an artist, there's some guesses about what it's going to sound like. Mm -hmm. You know, there's some expectations for what it should sound like. Mm -hmm. And I was like, you know, there's some things on here. I, I'm a little bit more vulnerable than I was on my last album. But I was like, you know what, I'm just going to be myself. I'm expressing myself through music. That's what I do. Mm -hmm. And this perfect song came along and I was like, you know, we're going to make the make this the title track of the album and we're going to name the album Be You because I'm being me and I want to encourage other people to do the same. Like, mm -hmm. you know, express yourself and don't limit yourself based on other people's expectations of you mm -hmm. and, and role, society's expectations mm -hmm. for you, know, et cetera. So, yeah. Okay. I'm glad you said that. Um, and the reason why is because I know there's some type in, in the in the day and age of social media, there's all these kind of quotes going around. So artistically speaking, what quote do you fall back on that keeps you going as an artist? What quote do I fall back on? I got to think about this. Um, <laughs> artistically. You know what? Be the change you wish to see. There's some changes I want to see in the music industry, in the, in the mainstream, because I grew up wanting to be this mainstream artist, right? Because that's what I listen to. I listen to, like, the Top 40 radio and stuff. And I'm like, there's so much good music out here that could be on the radio, but it's not being played. And no shade thrown to what is on the radio, but there's just more out there. And we need to show people that there's other ways of expressing yourselves. You don't just have to be. And, I, you know, I won't go down that. Okay. I'll just say... Um, when, when it comes to making my music, my music that I make, I feel like is com commercially viable. Okay. And it, it doesn't always have messages that you hear right now on right. commercial radio. Right. And so I'm, as I'm writing it for myself and in the future, in the near future for others, I'm going to be inserting that change that I want to see in the mainstream um, music world. So. Listen to some of your songs, I can see that, and I really dig that. So people want to get to know Miss Ashley DeBose. How do they, how do they find you? On, I mean, it ain't that hard, let's yeah. be honest. But how do they find you? How do they connect with you on social media? 
Well, I am on Twitter, Instagram, SoundCloud, Facebook, <laughs> all of that. And if you go to AshleyDubose.com, there's a link to all of those social media sites. So I'm just going to give you www.AshleyDubose, that's D-U capital B-O-S-E. And you go there and it, it's a one-stop shop. You can click on um, all the links, whatever social media platform you prefer to use. I'm really excited to see you continue to bubble and blow up. Thank you. Thank, Thank you for coming out. Thanks for having me, Sani. My name is Sani.
first debut filming of Candy First. So Y'all just give it up for yourselves right now. So I'm first going to, on behalf of the Pound Hands Media Group, give a special thank you to Toki Wright and Big Cats, as well as Eric Mason and Lydia Liza for that awesome performance. As well as Kenneth Caldwell for that beautiful painting, so make some noise for our